Well, it's time for another Koei strategy game. At this point, I'm a little bit surprised that they keep publishing them on the Famicom. In fact, the Famicom is the original release for Royal Blood. I'm sure it was developed for the PC first, but it took a few more months before the various computer versions came out. So the Famicom is the lead platform here. Of course, there's also a Super Famicom and Mega Drive version, because Koei really made these games available for everyone. Of course, as a Koei strategy game, Royal Blood uses a system very similar to Son Gokushi, Nobunaga no Yabo, and Genghis Khan, plus a bunch of others at this point. But there is a significant difference between Royal Blood and those other earlier games. Royal Blood seems to have been specifically designed for a console. It's got a better interface, and the gameplay is a lot more streamlined. It's why Royal Blood is often the game pointed to when someone is looking for a place to get started with classic Koei strategy games. You're not going to be overwhelmed by 60 different options here. Royal Blood also pulls Koei away from historical games to a fantasy setting. In a fantasy kingdom, peace was maintained through the use of a magic crown that had six gems in it. A tyrant has taken over the kingdom, but the princess rebels against her father, breaking the magic crown and scattering the gems across the world. That sparks a civil war as the leaders of the various noble houses of the kingdom vie to be the ones who could control the crown, and thus the kingdom. There are four different scenarios that you can play out in Royal Blood, though they all have the exact same end goals. Find all the gems, and retake the capital. The scenarios only really vary in the starting positions. You get your choice of four different kingdoms for every scenario, and once you've picked out who you're playing as, you have to choose an advisor. Honestly, the advisor doesn't do a whole lot for you. Every turn in the game is a month, and you get to do an action for every one of the provinces you control. One thing you're going to notice quickly is that a lot of the interface is now icon-driven. A lot of the extraneous stats have been removed as well. Every province still has gold, food, and loyalty, but there's only one level of progression, and that's for agriculture. There's also something telling you how fortified your province is. All of the commands are grouped together in four icons. Military, Domestic, Foreign, and Vassals. Also from this menu, you can hit up and down to bring up your advisor to see what they have to say. There's only four options under each of those four main headings. For military, you can go to war, recruit troops, move them around, or hire monstrous mercenaries. Monsters are special troops that are extra effective, but cost you a lot. For your domestic options, you can work on the fields, hand out food to the people, move goods between provinces, or buy and sell food. Field improvements always cost 10 gold. No more, no less. And they seem to go rather slowly, or at least I could only improve by two or three each time. Something you'll notice if you go to sell is that in Royal Blood, you no longer enter exact numbers. Anytime you're dealing with moving stuff around, whether it's food, gold, or men, you can select what fraction of that you're going to deal with. When it comes to foreign affairs, you can work your alliances, try to recruit people from the other side, secretly wreck their fields and fortifications, or send raiding parties to loot their money and food. Finally, the Vassals menu is where you view data about your provinces, assign somebody to run yours, and for some reason you can send spies to search for the magic gems. When it's time for battle, you have to select how much food you're going to send along with you, and that's measured in days. Then you go to this close-up battlefield where you've got your units and the enemy units, and they're lined up on either side. Your goal is to wipe out their leader or take their flag. And it's a basic you-go-they-go -go system. You move all of the units on your side, in any order that you like, and then they do the same. Some units have special abilities, like the archers who can shoot at long range, and there's a few different kinds of wizards that do different things. Also, your soldiers can build fortifications to block off paths. Once you've made all your moves, you hit B, and you can select that you're done. That's also where you could choose to retreat, or you could turn on an auto battle. Between turns, random events can occur that will affect your provinces. They could be struck by plague, or there might be floods or wildfires, and sometimes a magical creature will turn up. 
I think this means that the ruler is a virgin. Koei would make this the first game in their Imagination series, which was a catch-all for their fantasy works. The other games in the series are the Western-developed Celtic Tales, Balor of the Evil Eye, and Royal Blood 2, which was a PC-only game. Royal Blood has a pretty good reputation in Japan. It seems like everyone considers it to be a gateway Koei strategy game. But one aspect to that is that the game is a lot easier than other Koei strategy games. It's not just a matter of streamlining the game, it's just not nearly as punishing to players as it could be. And other than the scenario selection, there isn't any difficulty option. I feel like Royal Blood is one of those defining moments for Koei. A lot of what they do going forward streamlines the interfaces and simplifies the options for players. We're not going to see the results of that on Fami Daily, unfortunately. The remaining Koei strategy games that get ported to the Famicom are definitely in the mold of their classic style. But I think Royal Blood was an experiment that helped them learn what they needed to do to improve. And if you were going to play any one of the classic Koei strategy games, Royal Blood would be the one to pick. You're not going to be spending your first three hours of play just learning what to do here.